Hello, and welcome back to UGNN, the first and last news network currently available for humanity. Today, we have a special report by Grant McCarty, which will be featuring uh, after the last six months of government unrest, government officials have teamed up with China and the United States to create Chad, and I will let him explain the rest of it. We will take you live on the scene with Grant McCarty, currently talking about the uh, unrest for the monster mania currently affecting humanity. Go ahead, Grant. Hello, and this is Grant McCarty reporting live from the ruins of Washington, D.C., where we're going to be viewing a test demonstration of Chinese newest monster, the Dontonator 9000, who will hopefully be working together with Chad to defeat the kaiju threat that is threatening humanity. I believe we have some footage of that right now, so let's go to that. Oh, wasn't that some scary footage we have there? Hopefully the Dontonator 9000 and the Chad can take care of the kaiju threat, shaping up to be humanity's final battle. If this doesn't turn out and we can't stabilize the region, this could be the end of all humanity. Uh, looks like we have a disturbance, so we're going to get out of here. Back to you in the studio, Michael. Okay, Grant, thank you very much for that special report. I hope everything is well with you and uh, everybody there is safe. Hopefully the Chad and the uh, Dontonator are able to solve this problem, and if not, the Monster Mania will continue, and this might not only be the last, but the only remaining news network available until even this is no more and humanity is destroyed. Back to you, Michael Wright, where we discuss the newest game, Monster Mania, and how you can do your part to help against this monster global uh, explosion of violence and destruction. Go ahead and take it to the review aspect of the game now. Monster Mania with you, Michael. Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Monster Mania by Josh McMurray, and it's by Meet Me at the Table Games. It's for one to six players, takes about 30 or more minutes to play, and it's for ages 10 and up. In the game Monster Mania, you're going to be getting a faction and a monster, along with some cards that you'll be able to place face down, it will be played straight up. You're going to be trying to destroy your opponent's monsters, as you saw previously, and if you're able to do that, you're going to gain points. Of course, they're going to be called prize points and you have a rubble pile for your discard pile. This is a character board here in which if you can gain five prize points you're going to win the game. That's easier said than done though because you're going to need to gain attack points in order to use your monster's attack value and there's going to be multiple players that are able to play the game as they go on drawing cards, playing them, putting down new monsters and fighting. The person with the last amount of uh, with the first person who gathers all the victory points is going to be the winner of the game. All right let's go down and show you the game as well as all the components that come with it. So here we have the game Monster Mania and everything included and of course it's going to come with a box and the rules to explain everything along with player boards. There's six of them in total and I'm here showing you four. You're also going to get one monsters to start with based on the monsters they allow you to have and a deck full of different cards. It's a large deck here so I've set it up into two piles. You're also going to be getting these cards here which will show your instructions which are your symbols and of course your turn uh, actions you can take and uh, you're going to be giving everybody one of these cards. You're also going to get your player boards and of course these tokens whether it be damage, whether it be attack points, or whether it be uh, these things, which are going to be prize points. There's other ones that are turn markers for specific cards. On your player board here, you have your combat zones. You're going to have your support zones. You're going to have your prize pool areas, where if you get five, you win the game. There's your attack points area, where you just point, put points in here for the attack of the monsters, and then you can utilize them to attack. And then your rubble pile, which is basically your discard pile. This is pretty much everything you get in the game, other than maybe any other extra stretch goals and whatnot that come with it. All right, so let's come up and talk about how to take a turn. For a turn in Monster Mania, you're simply going to start by having five cards from the deck that you take after shuffling the deck. You're also going to get one randomly selected monster from a pool of the nine monsters that are available in the game, which of course there could be more. And then you're going to be able to take any actions you want, whether it be putting down a face down support card, playing a face up environmental card that's going to give you attack points and other potential uh, counters, and then placing it in the rubble pile, or placing a monster in your combat zone. You can place as many cards as you want, up until the point where you have no cards in hand, and of course you're also able to attack. In order 
to attack you, you have to play uh, attack points from your attack point pool, use the attack on the monsters that you have to choose, and select an opponent's monster to take that damage. If a monster goes to zero health, they are dead, and you're going to gain a prize point. When you have no more cards, or when you choose to end your turn, because you don't want to play any more actions, you pass, and the next opponent gets to take their turn. At the beginning of the turn, regardless of how many cards they have in your hand, you're going to draw up to five cards, having a max limit of five cards in your hand, and continue the game in a clockwise fashion. Defeating monsters is the goal of the game, and once somebody is able to defeat five monsters from their opponent's side of the field, or any of their opponent's side of the field, and gain those five prize points, they are going to be the winner of the game Monster Mania, and that's the idea of how to play. Let's take it down below, and I will show you a couple rounds of how the game is played, and uh, what it takes to win the game. So now we're back to the game Monster Mania, and I went ahead and set up for four players. Every single player is going to get a random monster from the deck. You take out the monsters of each unique type, and then you shuffle them up and give everybody a monster. We've got Volpanic over here, and uh, Gargantuan. This is a Trickstale Terrestrial, and then Iron Menace. This is the main deck of cards. You're actually going to go ahead and put this all into one big deck, but for purposes of being able to see it easier, I've just went ahead and set it into two decks, which I have people draw from. All the tokens are just here and ready to be used, and of course, if you want, you can give every single player one or two of these player cards depending on how many number of players there are so they can see the different symbols and their turn instructions. Okay, so to begin a game, we'll go ahead and start with this player over here and look at his hand of five cards. He's got a counter here, another counter, a support card, a monster, and an environment. We'll go ahead and play that monster card. Remember, you can play as many actions as you want. An environmental lets you discard uh, discard this card to gain two attack points so he can put this into the rumble pile and then he's going to be able to gain two attack points so one and then two which you go ahead and put in your attack point pool uh we've got a support here which has uh once it's activated deal an extra five damage to an opponent's monster for up to three attacks so we'll place it face down you can flip it when you want uh, but when you want to flip it it's going to give you three of these little time tokens here which will symbolize every single time you use an attack it gives you plus five damage and then once all three are gone the card is gone as well these counters will let you do certain things like, for instance, if somebody attacks one of your monsters, you can play this card and search your deck for one of these guys here, a Pterosaur, and put it into play. It'll also be a little bit stronger. And then this one here is whenever an opponent would play a counter, this card counters that counter. So we'll hold on to these two cards here. It's pretty useful to save for later. After that, he's going to go ahead and end his turn because he doesn't want to use anything. Uh, this guy's attack here is it says shows two for 10 damage, three for 15, and four for 35. And it's based on the number of attack points he has. So he could do 10 damage to a monster here, but that's not going to do enough to kill it. This guy here has stronger attacks, but also costs more attack points. So the next person's turn in clockwise order is right here. He's going to go ahead and look at the hand cards in his hand. He can go ahead and play Ozmek, and he can go ahead and play... Let's see, a support card here. This one says once it's activated, it heals a monster in combat for plus five. Um, and then we have environmentals here. This one you can discard uh, along with, let's see, discard this card, then discard two other cards in your hand, and, uh, uh, and then you gain three attack points. And this one says you can discard this card to deal 10 damage to an opponent's monster, or discard this card to gain three attack points choose one of your monsters to take 10 damage. We'll go with this one first. Make this monster take 10 damage, so he's going to go ahead and take his 10, so he's down to uh, 50 health, and then he's going to gain his 3 attack points, which is probably worth it, and put a 3 there. And he doesn't have enough to use the extra environmental, but he does have this counter he can save for later, which is a call to arms. Next player is then going to get to go with his 5 cards here. He's got a Killipede, he's got a Venom 5, and he's got another Venom 5, so I just play these guys here. Now he's got a bunch of monsters on the field. He's got an environmental that's says you can discard this card to do five damage or gain an attack point. So he'll go ahead and gain one attack point, save that for later. And he's got a backfire counter he can save and this monster he doesn't really need to use. And so on and so forth. The next player is gonna get to take their turn. Uh, he's gonna play another monster here. He's got environmental, which is gonna give him some attack points. And uh, he's also going to uh, have these two counters he can save. And this is another environmental. Discard this card, choose one of the two effects. So heal a monster. Uh, in your zone by 5, then do 10 damage to an opponent's monster, or draw one card from the deck, then gain an attack point. So he'll go ahead and gain another attack point, and he will draw a uh, card from the deck, which is well, can be pretty useful, depending on if it's useful this turn. And he can get some monsters to put in play. And then he's got two more counters, which he will go ahead and save. Then in the next turn, it's, in, it's in pretty simple. You're going to get to draw up to your 5 cards and continue. He got another uh, support card, which you go ahead and push face down. And he's got an environmental card. Discard this card to do 30 damage to a monster or discard this card to gain four attack points uh, choose one of your monsters it takes 20 so yeah okay we'll do that so that's gonna give him four more attack points let's see here uh, three and four and one of his monsters is gonna take 20 damage we'll just pick the one that has the most health which is the 85 so it's down to 55 
uh, 70, or 65 now, sorry. And uh, then he's got his two counters and another support. Once activated, deals five extra environment. Okay, so he'll place this face down. And then let's go ahead and attack with one of these guys. So I'll show you. He's got a three, four, five, six. And his six over here is going to do 25 damage. And this one over here, his four will do 35. So we'll do the four because this one has more damage. And when he does this, he also takes one of these and takes it off, which is going to increase it from four uh, to 35 to 40 damage. And then he selects a monster around here. So he'll select this Killipede, which has 40 health. It will take 40 damage, and then it will die, putting it in the rubble. And this player has defeated one of the monsters, and he's going to gain one of these. However, if uh, maybe this guy has a counter in his hand, so for instance, it, when one of your monsters in the combat zone would take environmental damage from an opponent, choose one of your opponent's monsters. That monster takes the environmental damage instead. Well, it's not environmental damage, it's straight attack damage. So had he used this as, as 30 damage, it could have been blocked. But because he didn't, this guy is going to lose his monster, right? And that's one of the five points this guy needs to win the game. He could use his two other attacks, but I think he's going to go ahead and save them. And then it's going to be the next player's turn. Drawing back up to five here. We've got another environmental card. Deals 25 damage. Oh, he can gain four attack points and choose a monster to take 15 damage, which he'll go ahead and do. One, two, three, and four more. And the 15 damage. Let's see. This guy... Here, we'll take another 15. He's already down to uh, 35 health. But he's got a lot of attack. Three, four, five, six, and seven. And uh, this one here is four for 45. So we can go, or five for 45. So we'll go ahead and remove these to do 45 damage. Let's select something on the field that has, ooh, nothing has 45. So let's go ahead and hit this big guy really hard. That will give us uh, some extra damage on him. 55, 65. So he's only got like 20 points left. All right, and does he have anything else he can do? Discard this, uh, then discard two other cards from your hand to gain three attacks. So we can do that and discard two other cards from his hand that he doesn't need, maybe these two here. And he's going to then gain more attack points, which they can, can use to attack more monsters. And that's the way the game is basically going to go. Keep drawing cards in your hand, destroying your opponent's monsters, gaining prize points, hitting off the weaker monsters, trying to counter your opponent's attacks, and so on and so forth. The winner, like I said before, is five prize points. And once that occurs, the game is over. All right, let's come up and I'll talk about it. All right, so Monster Mania, let's talk about it. Now, there's a couple caveats first. The first thing is you can't use environmental cards if you don't have a monster in the combat fit space. So no setting up attack points. Points. Another thing to note too is uh, when you attack, you can do it multiple times provided you have enough actions. See, there's infinite actions provided you have the cards in your hand to be able to do so, and you're able to deal damage to yourself on the first turn, which will give you those attack points, but you're not able to attack your opponent's monsters on the first round. So everybody gets a chance to play certain things, hold their counters, and then the fun begins. So the next round is when everybody can simply start attacking. It's the same rules as Magic the Gathering and whatnot. Um, that's the basic idea as far as that goes. So in the game, it's basically a a monster bash free-for-all. Everybody has their own player boards and they're going to be getting different monsters. Some of them are stronger but do less damage. Maybe some of them are weaker and do more damage. Some of them are in the middle. They all have different things uh, as far as the attacks go and the damage modifiers. Uh, one of these guys actually has... Uh, you can do a lot of damage with them, but they require a lot. This guy here, this full panic, he needs nine uh, combat points to do 70 damage. That's almost enough to defeat almost any monster in the game, so that's pretty strong. And playing big monsters will deter your opponents from hitting you, but it's also going to give you less damage to gain more prize points, which is the most important thing in the game. There's, of course, the environmental cards, which can hurt yourself to give you attack points or just simply give you basic attack points. You can use those cards to, attack, to deal damage to your opponent's monsters. But like I had previously stated, there's cards like Backfire that are going to counter the amount of damage done by environmentals. There's also counter cards that will counter damage done by monsters. So uh, instead of attacking uh, me, I'm going to make it retroactively attack you instead. And that type of a thing, right? Uh, and it's going to go back and forth, basically. It's a very simple game. Drawing your cards, playing your cards, and your actions, following the simple steps, and defeating your monster, your opponent's monsters, until somebody gets five points. And it has some interesting yet lucrative aspects to the game. First of all, the artwork's pretty cool. I like the feel of the game as far as... Uh, it reminds me a lot of like the King of Tokyo style stuff going on. It's a little less cartoony than that. It's a little more animation style artwork. Some of it's better than, uh, some of the artwork is better in my opinion than other pieces. 
Uh, but all of it's pretty sweet. I, li I like this style of monsters, and it does have this 80s feel of monsters destroying a city. Uh, it, it could be used to some more monsters that have different abilities on them, just the, other than just the attack. Maybe a monster that takes five uh, less damage or whatnot. I think that would be kind of cool, in including unique aspects to each monster that have passive abilities. But all of them also have some kind of flavor text. Uh, this is a Venom S, which is more than just a snake in the grass. This fast serpent will stop at nothing to find its prey. So I like flavor text on all the cards. That's pretty cool. But I'd like to see some passive abilities attached to all the different monsters. Maybe a way to combine your monsters or something like that. That could be kind of cool. It's, it's very, very simple as it stands. This game is definitely just below the medium weight type of game. It's quick to play and easy to learn and pretty much functions like an average take that game with the aspect of putting down your monsters and defending your tableau. Support slots. You place cards face down, you can flip them up. They don't actually, you can't, I don't think you can actually use them on your, uh, on your opponent's turns as a reactionary as aspect. And when I first thought of Yu-Gi-Oh, right, because when you place your cards face down, you've activated my trap card. You can go ahead and flip over a card. Card, right? Well, not in this game. This game, you're going to be simply using them, and they're, they're, they're very similar to environmental cards, except instead of getting attack points, they'll do something specific, and they can last for a certain number of turns or a certain number of actions, like the batter up card, which I showed you. Uh, it lasts for three attacks, and it gives you five damage on top of each attack that you go ahead and use, and once those three attacks are used up, that's it. I think there could be even more variety included, which is cool, because as the game stands, it's a very simple, yet nice take that game with some unique little aspects to it. And it's very simple for kids and family members to understand and learn how to play the game. Uh, the board is easy to use as well. This does feel like one of those games that I think a family type of uh, gaming environment is going to enjoy. Or if you really enjoy games that fall into the line of other like tabletop trading slash living style card games. But it's not really like that. Uh, as you saw the game, you see, you've seen how it's explained in every way. I've explained the artwork and the quality of everything. is It's prototype. It's mainly from the game crafter. So it can all use work on all the stuff. So I'd like to see what it's going to look like when it's all done. But as it stands, it's a fun, cute little game. Another thing to note, it's not a two-player game. I wouldn't play this two players. We tried it a couple times. I did not enjoy it that much. But with more and more players, that was when the mayhem increased and got more fun. I think this game plays well at four plays okay at five and then six it gets to be a little too much and there's a little too many things going on and your turn doesn't come around as much uh, so somewhere in that that sweet spot somewhere between three and five players in my opinion it's also good because it increases the social aspect of the game when you have more players then you can say oh don't attack me attack him or I've weakened this monster for you can you can weaken this so a little bit of politics comes into the game otherwise in a two-player game it's just a back and back and forth take that style game nothing wrong with that but it just doesn't fit my appeal for this style of a game I like to see more players playing it so I do recommend it with more players overall it's a solid little monster take that style tableau management card game it if Monster Mania seems like something you'd be interested, you go ahead and check it out below and the link in the description are currently on Kickstarter Monster Mania. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you're interested in taking a look at Monster Mania in the description below, go ahead and do so, as well as checking out unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Currently giving away two or three games right now on the site. Also, go ahead and check out uh, everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek. They give away tons of different games and stuff like that. And if you like giveaways, they give away even more than my own site. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to destroying the world with the Dontonator and, of course, the Chad with you next time.